Hello everybody, what's up? Sister Cedra here, CRS and Commentary, and we will, be we will be reviewing AEW All In, which took place in London three days ago, Wembley Stadium, and let's, I'm, I'm going to get the nitpicking out the way, because Cedra noticed it, um, and after the show, I've got to say something, a few things, this poster, this, this, this graphic. Why is the world champion not in the middle of it? Why is Okada in the middle? Why? Goon is up there, but he didn't show up in, during the, the pay-per-view. Adam Copeland's up there. And he didn't show Unless up. Unless they in the pre-show, we were not going to watch the pre-show. Not even trying. You know, so why would your champion not be in the middle? Big as life, because that's who it's about. You know, that's the main event right there. Yeah. You know, or bottom barrel least your 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 top storyline and big match people should be up front. And yeah. So that's 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 not sitting well with me. Oh no, Kata to be in the center contributed very little to the entire experience. Very little. So Let's let's jump on up in here, and you know, okay. So look, it started off with a trios title match. It's a London ladder match because they're in London. It's so indie named. Yeah, it's a ladder match, okay. And they don't use lucha rules, so why is it tree? I, I, I get it. I understand their mindset, but. There's no logic with a lot of this. But it's Christian Cage, Kill Switch, and Nick Wayne. They're the champions. The patriarch or patriarchy. Uh -huh. You've got uh, Gun Club, um, the Bang Bang Gang, Juice Robinson, and the Guns. You got House of Black, Nobody. So you got Pac. You got Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castanoli. Ah, and Pac is there. I forgot who's the House of Black. Was it all? I didn't see Buddy out there. I I didn't see him. That mean he wasn't. There was a lot of folks. Yeah, it was a lot of people. In any case, uh, let's see. So this did not start well for us, and the spot of singles running in to climb the ladder, and then some one stopping them. That just bored me, and I was like, and she was already ready to skip. So. You know, we, we skipped. So at the end, Cage is slowly struggling near the top with Kill Switch beneath him. And he's struggling. He can't move for some reason. I don't know what was holding him up. Some kind of crazy glue, gorilla glue, or, you know, I don't know. But he, he just couldn't do it for some reason. And then Pac, he rushes in and climbs the ladder as if, his, as if his body's trying to fail him. And he simply boot kicks Cage off. Just, just kicked him, knocked him off. Yanks the belt down, he wins. There you go. Yep. And it was Pac that did it. But what's his name? Sockface said Pac was with Wheeler, Yuta, and Claudio. I, it was. But they said House of Black won. No, it didn't. I was like, BCC should, but okay. I, I, and then House of Black walked up and shook Pac and them's hands. So um, like apparently Sockface screwed up, but yeah, the BCC won in this iteration with Pac. I don't know what's going on. Things are happening. So AEW women's title. So uh, Mariah May versus Tony Storm. Sockface announces May's mother's in the audience and they show her. He explains that this is the second time she's been able to see her daughter wrestle. Why? May's the heel. And this would gain sympathy for, for the heel. This, her mom is out there. This is for her. Why, why, why do that? She's the bad guy. You don't mention family. You don't. And if you do mention family, like she must be disappointed in her daughter taking this path. You know, how could she be this way? Because it would actually help for what happens later. But Tony had a really good babyface entrance. Yeah. Really good. 
Luther looked good, had his whole butler vibe going. Maximum Dapper. Or da Dapper Maximum. Maximum Butler. Yep. They do the typical hockey fight, head fully lowered thing. So that looks stupid. That looks phony. Because um, the hockey fight, they. Look, you want to do a hockey fight in wrestling? You want to really know how to do it? Grab them by the back of their neck and just forearm the living hell out of them. That's, that's basically, that would be more of a hockey fight. Because hockey players don't lower their head so they can't see anything. They don't windmill punch. <laughs> so they do the finisher teaser right after that. Then May spits on Luther and Aubrey keeps him at bay. I'm like, nope, I'm the ref. You touch, you, you know, it's a disqualification. Do what you got to do, bro. Yeah, really. Then May kisses Nigel on the forehead and then goes back and drop kicks Luther. May then goes to her own mom and then slaps her. Why? Ooh, the I don't, the I don't point? Know. The whole chain of events didn't make any sense. Tony hits Storm Zero on the steps. Injury angle, devastating. Amounts to nothing. Tony hugs May's mom and it was cute. And during the distraction, May blades herself in two small areas, two little spots on the side of her top side of her head, like within the hairline, because you know you don't want to mark up your face as a female. You don't want to divine deadly yourself. Nah, you don't want to do that. Good grief. So Tony hits mom. Oops, I'm, 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 it was covered. Tony hits Storm Zero. She, Tony didn't hit the mom. <laughs> she, she didn't do that. Uh, Tony hits Storm Zero in the ring for a two count. So that's, that's one on the steps. That's one in the ring. They do the hockey fight. And for some reason, the ref breaks it up just so make a low blow kick. Storm, who returns it before they mutually headbutt each other for a double knockdown. May hits her finish for a two count. May goes for the belt as a weapon and Luther stops her. Everyone's happy. May gets the bloody shoe, but Storm stops her and teases to hit her with it. She doesn't know what to do. She's conflicted in a fight. <laughs> uh, and then Storm Zero is countered with a roll up for a two count. May hit Storm Zero for a three count. So the champ got defeated by her own move. Yep. And the only bragging rights that. Oop, Nick the keyboard there. The only bragging right that Tony could get out of this is to say. Nothing in your arsenal can beat me, so you had to take something of mine. Yeah, this, this match was terrible. Yep, and I had to note that sadly, Storm's conflict on using the shoe told the ending of this match. Because this is, that's not a hindsight. I thought that I should have wrote it when I thought it, but uh, I figured I'd just wait until well, the end. What's to be conflicted about? She had no problem using the shoe on you. Yep. And, you know, and Tony seems a bit happy and deranged as the fans chant her name when she's leaving. So now we get the AEW for the world title. Hook versus Chris Jericho. Fozzie performs and Jericho sings himself to the ring. And it's a three-on-one fight as Big Bill and Ryan Keith aid in the ring. Yep. Like, damn near the whole match. Hook suplexes Keith, tosses Bill over the top rope, suplexes Jericho. Um, doesn't last long. Jericho's back on offense. Jericho um, dumps cricket balls in the ring. Hook backdrops him on one of them, allegedly. Hook get if you got back if you get backdropped on one of them balls, you hurt. Yeah. And if you ain't hurt, you're gonna have a bruise. That's happening. And if your head smack one. You might not be out, but you ain't fighting. Hook gets a cricket bat, beats on everyone. Then he uses it to start smacking the balls. And I'm like, you know, you're hitting them pretty hard. They could go into the fans, knock out an eye, a tooth, fatten a lip, crack a skull. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so then he starts throwing them at Jericho. and Which is funny. Yeah, that, that was funny. You know, the fans are mostly dead as they await the next move. That's all this match was. Just quiet. Then, ooh! Uh. Uh. You know, it was, it was like British sex. <laughs> just, okay. What? I'm just... Family Guy did that to me. Yeah. But, 
that, that was just just having fun, just a just a little jokey joke. And so uh, they boo the reverse Boston Crab by Jericho, but Sherwin Hook applies it. And at that point, I, I, I just know that Hook is so low and has no help so far. Man. The heels get a table and place a barbed wire plank on it. A thumb to the eye leaves Hook blinded for a bit. After some offense, Hook removes the black patch and his eye is fine. It's healed. So why pretend? That's just dumb. That's, he should have came to the ring with the eye patch like on. And then do a few moves, take it off, and be like, it's on. But, you know, yeah. So you wrestle with a disadvantage. Get poked in the good eye, so you had an extreme disadvantage. And then you take it off to show that you was never at a disadvantage. Thank you. So much for wasting my time. So Bill tries to do something and Hook knocks him off the apron onto the table to a modest pop. And Taz is like, you know what? I made this belt. I made these rules. You know, and they're going to do this. I get to do something. So Taz goes in and he applies the Taz mission to Keith to a, a decent pop. They were happy. The fans were happy. Yeah. And Hook was using it, his name, Red Room, on Jericho to score the submission. New champion. Hook and Taz hug it out. To a decent pop. They're both the same height. Yep. AEW tag team titles. Three way match. FTR versus Young Bucks, the champions, versus the acclaimed. And Caster had a, 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 a nice uh, vulgar rap, you know, short. It was alright. Um, this was more or less a standard match with teammates aiding and opposing team's finishers. Dax was pinned after the double team knee attack. This wasn't a bad match. Just not a good match. <laughs> okay. It, I, I would give it I would give it about two and a half to three stars. That's why I would give it if you're going to star rate it. An actual star rating. And after the match, Drake and Gibson they enter the ring Stare off the Bucks and then beat down Cash Wheeler. And then FTR is on site. It's on site. Yeah, 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 you dumbasses. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for somebody else to let me know if they actually do on site because on site means as soon as you see them, you get them. It ain't pre-planned or nothing. It ain't rehearsed. You just walking around. You see him in the back. Up, oh, it's time to fight. I, I, said, d- like, I, I doubt it's gonna go down like that. See, yep. I'm just saying, that's how it should be. But that, but people don't know what on site mean anyway. Some of them probably think you need a scope. I don't know. So Casino Battle Royal winner gets a contract for the AEW title at any point they want. So this is the order of entry. And look, the match can end, okay, at any given point. So long as there's a pin or submission, there's obviously no DQ. And so you've got 12 participants and you expect the people to believe that this could end before all 12 come out. See that right there, you're already insulting everyone's intelligence. It should be, it's going to be timed. And then once all 12 are in, the match begin and pin submission. It's, you know, and you can even put disqualification. A disqualification gets you eliminated, but it does not stop the match. You can only stop the match with a pin or submission. That would be better. So Orange Cassidy comes out to a Mr. Bean vignette. Ugh. Then Okada come out to some... Che- Orange Cassidy got some cheers. Okada got some cheers. Nigel Beginners comes out to a massive pop. I was surprised. I was surprised. I, and, 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 and you had said... It'd be amazing if he comes out of his injury or retirement or retirement injury just so he can get at the clam digger. For real. That no. had me laughing. He don't like him. <laughs> no, he don't. And I'm not going to lie, I enjoy Nigel disliking him. It's hilarious. It's lovely. He goes against his whole heel commentator program. Yes. Just to hate on this man. That was Bobby Heenan 
with against Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so then next is Kyle O'Reilly. Then another massive pop for Zack Sabre Jr., winner of the G1 Climax that we're still going to do. We're still going to, we know, we already, we saw when he solidified his points, at least for his block. You know, and we know he won the whole thing, but we're still going to watch it. We're still going to review it. Yeah. You know, because we said we was going to watch the whole G1 this year, and we're going to do it. Uh, then Roderick Strong come out, and he walked to me like, mm, mm. that's how he was walking. It was just some mean seven-year-old. That's what it looked like. That, then Mark Briscoe comes out to a good pop. He's a Ring of Honor champion, vying for another world title, which kind of says his title is second. That's not good. I see that he was the only individual from Ring of Honor on the show. Uh, yeah. Adam Page comes out. He's got pyro for some reason. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett come out, and Jarrett's work is so damn good. It's just, you watch everybody else, then you watch Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, like, he was really nailing them people. Then, a debut, and with Pyro, Ricochet. And I'm going to be honest with you, he's bigger, he's bulkier, and he's crisp. Yeah, he looked good. It was polished. Yeah, he's doing all the flippies, the floppies, and stuff like that. He had his ship together. Yep. And it didn't, it didn't look stupid. That's what I'm going to say about Ricochet. It didn't look stupid, but I don't, I don't watch the show like that. So, but this is his debut. Mm -hmm. um, and then, <laughs> this is Cedra's favorite spot. Christian Cage comes to the ring hobbling. Ha! I'll beat up from the trios match. <laughs> so then, Luchasaurus comes in slightly hobbling. And then Luchas choke slams Kyle, places Cage on top of him, got the pin. Nobody else in the ring? Nope. I mean, there's 10 other people and not one of them could get in the ring and stop this? Nope. Mm. This is why you don't do things like this, y'all. So then we got... I, I the, just got to say. Say it. Uh, Kill Switch is it, still under, under Christian Cage's thumb. I wonder what else Kill Switch does for Christian Cage. Yeah. Because... You can only get shafted, shit canned, and humiliated, but so much. Because right now, Kill Switch is Christian Cage's Virgil. Mm -hmm. He's just not doing all the gross stuff Virgil had to do. So, now we get the AEW American title. This show has so much to not offer anyone as a surprise it just there's nothing to offer you know who's gonna win every match you know and if you don't know which one will win you know who is gonna lose that's what's messed up if it's a multi-person you be like oh this person this this the weakest one they're gonna yeah he's done so any no surprise no man i want to see this that that's kind of what makes certain wrestling boring to me when it's like oh i know how this is going to end mm -hmm. but sometimes it does have to end that way but this is a pay-per-view there should be surprises if tony storm had won it would have made sense i wouldn't have been surprised and i would have been happy it would have been all of that. Oh, I expected this. But it's the right thing, and I'm happy with it. But it's odd. The fans didn't seem to be booing Mariah May. Or Maria May. Mariah. Mariah. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was really booing her. Even though she's the heel that messed up Tony. She's the, she went out and slapped the hell out of her mom. She cheated to win. She spit and drop kicked Luther. She kissed the heel commentator. And I swear they cheered her a bit at the end. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with people. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to cheer. We're happy to be here. I mean, they could be happy to get that. They could have been <laughs> like, hey, like we went when we went to ECW. You know, give us hell, Dudleys, because we we were just happy to see it. Yeah, 
That's how everybody was there. Maybe they were all half drunk. <laughs> Everything was wonderful. <laughs> Everything. So, Will Ospreay versus MJF. And Will had a serious intro. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me tell you this. He had the intro that was best suited for the Olympics. <laughs> and his intro ended with a bigger deluge of pyro and boasting. It <laughs> and then MJF come out. You see, I wrote I wrote Osprey had an epic intro that covers various title match victories. MJF comes out like Apollo Creed, you said that first. Uh-huh. And after his name was announced, the US flag hangs down with MJF's face as the, the stars. I didn't notice that you did. Mm -hmm. Um I was I was too busy typing. And it's funny when that flag dropped, it's like you could see almost Osprey's defeat inside. Mm -hmm. And you could tell the fans was like, oh crap. So Okay, so MJF's gear is very close to Lex Luger's during his beef with Yokozuna. I noticed that. And I figured I would just go with a few of the differences in this match because they did everything they did in their first match with a few well, differences. So, uh, late within, MJF hit the Canadian Destroyer on the apron to a nine count before Will entered the ring. Then there was an oh shit moment where Osprey tries an apron run hidden blade and hit the false cameraman but at the time we was in the moment he wiped out the cameraman and and, and busted up the camera and seeing that these cameras can go for a minimum of four thousand to a maximum of eight thousand dollars knowing tony khan he probably rented it for twelve thousand mm -hmm. um that literally we just was like oh shit at the same time i wish i had that recorded yeah in the ring laid to the bone <laughs> He was, dude was out. And it was like, get some help for him. Get some help for him. I'm like, I swear, to, I swear the ref said, get some help for the cameraman. Is that wrong? I mean, if he don't know his name. I mean, should he know his name? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he's part of the, the, the crew or if he's just there. But I'll tell you this. If somebody's going to be handling a multi-thousand dollar camera, let alone a multi-hundred dollar camera, I'm going to know them. I mean, I'm sure the, the, whoever hired them knows them, but it's not imperative the ref does. Um, yeah, I'm just saying. It, someone help the camera guy. I'm not... Y'all have to correct us on it if it was different. Um, so, in the ring, MJF hit Will with the belt right across the face for a two count. As soon as he kicked out, it was swift. MJF, he hit the brain buster for a two count. I was like, he's losing his belt. Mm -hmm. At that juncture, I was like, he's losing his belt. Because Will Ospreay got a stupid, foolish habit of being so superhuman that nothing can beat him. Like, for example, Will can kick out, of, kick out on two with a double finisher, so that's the belt, and then a brain buster. He kicks out, then he just lays there like he's dead. Yeah, like it was the worst thing. So you can kick out on two twice from two finishes, but then you can't get up. I'm like, you done, you done screwed the pooch on believability. Just, just go. Just get up and fight. <laughs> the ref was knocked down, so MJF, super low blow on Will. It was really good crotch shot. MJF for doing knuckles, and then a mystery guy stops him and then unveils himself to be Daniel Garcia. I'm like... Look, did I expect it to be him? No, because I'm not following AEW like that. But when I saw him, I was like, oh, it's you. That's, that's literally how I felt. Oh, it's you. And it was so pointless because he just stood there. He didn't do anything. Nope. He just stood there looking like, I don't like what you did, MJF. And that's it. Yep. I just want you to know, I don't like what you did. None of us like what you did. I guess some stuff went down. Uh, we didn't see we're, we're not going to see no, MJF allegedly in. hurt him and then Daniel's been out for this time oh, MJF injured. been talking yeah okay. allegedly and MJF has been talking all this trash and now he's back to spoil everything and that distracted MJF Osprey eventually hits the Tiger Drive on a limp MJF 
dropping him high up on his neck. So, you know, yeah. D look, it, it, look, Osprey, he won the American title. So, look, he drops Brian Danielson flat on his back from the Tiger driver. And Danielson plays hurt. And Will is like, oh, no, I'm traumatized. So he hits it. He jacks up Kenny Omega with it. Does it perfectly on, and it's the Jaguar driver, honestly, Jaguar Yokota or Monster Y. Uh, got Danielson proper with it, and that's scary. He hasn't wanted to do it. Then he finally does it, and he almost jacks up MJF. This is this is this is bass backwards. This is, stop doing it. <laughs> Osprey doesn't want to touch the belt, so Christopher Daniels. He presents the international title to him, and I had to know it sucks because it makes no sense to have this belt pre-made for a match that in kayfabe should have gone either way. So if Osprey lost. Would they take the American belt and say, this is the one you use from now on? So it's, it's stuff like that you got to think about. See, what you do is you have both belts out there. Or the American belt, he wins it and he makes the announcement, this is no longer the American belt, this is the international belt, or, you know, this is the Union Jack belt, or whatnot. The intergalactic belt. Something. You know, and, and then when you get back to Dynamite, you present the original belt and say, this is the belt that I will hold. That's what you do. But, yeah. Next we get, um, oh yeah, TBS title. Britt Baker versus Mercedes Monet. And Monet had a really good entrance. CJ wasn't happy with the uh, cape train. She had on her outfit mostly white with blue and red adornments. She had on this big old furry cape that was violet trimmed in white. From the front, it looked great. Yeah, but they gave her an overhead view. Everyone who had a train had an overhead view. And it looked, it, it, it clashed. It clashed. Somebody wasn't thinking. She was thinking royal violet, and I think they nailed that color perfectly. Yeah, they nailed it. She just didn't wear anything. They matched. Yeah. She, her outfit should have been white and royal violet. To it just put would've. so much thought into her. You could tell she put a lot of thought into her outfit and her hair. That was a big old hole in the in the boat. <sighs> yep. Britt Baker uh, had a nice intro. Mm hmm And, yeah, she had that look on her face like, I'm going to lose. She didn't look confident. She didn't look. When Britt's going to win, she looks cocky. If she looks placid, she's going to lose. Just just know that. So Monet, like I said, had a good intro, but we skipped it because Monet can't stop messing up and we got sick of it. Like, Look, Monet is little. Mm -hmm. She's got no muscle. She's weak. She's She is muscularly meek. <laughs> and... When she tried to do the slingshot backbreaker, she got Britt's legs up there, but then she couldn't get the slingshot to work. So Britt almost fell, and Monet's like, I got you, you could just, it's the way she held, she didn't say anything that I heard. I didn't see her lips move. It's just the way she was holding it, like, I got you, baby, I ain't gonna drop you. And then she back breaks her, and that looked a little sloppy. I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it was bad. All I would do is have notes on how Monet is messing up every second. So I was just got to go. And Monet hit her finish and got the three count. And with that finish, I know that it's the Gordy stretch. But when she throws her over, it's hard to tell who's taking most of the damage. So, okay. And I'm, I am... Not happy that Camille is like her valet, her second. This, I don't like that. 
Camille was is the two-time NWA Women's Champion, and she has held it for a long time. She we watched her improve herself every single month, every single match, mm -hmm. and then she comes here and she's playing second fiddle to some fiddle. It's <laughs> annoying. It's annoying. So now we get the TNT title match, the Turner Network Television title match. It's a coffin match. Darby Allen versus Jack Perry. The, so Perry's the champion. Allen glued tacks to his face because brilliant. <laughs> Logically speaking, if you're going to punch me, you're going to get tacks in your hand, right? Yeah. But they're on his forehead. You get punched in the face, not the forehead. They're on his face, too. It was on his face? Yeah. Oh, okay, I couldn't tell from the other crap on his face. I'm just sick of a lot of stupid stuff. So, Perry comes to the ring with a body bag. It's, it's a... And then Cedra said, it was after the match got started, she says, it looks like a homeless fight. It does. And I had to, I had to hold in a laugh on that. I was like, I'm not going to do this with her. Because you're going to keep going. And I'm going to be like, now I don't even know what this match is really about. Because I'll be too busy laughing and but mocking with her. Darby come out in these asymmetrical cut off black stone wash jeans with his tights underneath and whatever shoes. And this, this fuzzy pink uh, jacket like, you know, here's to keep you warm, fella. You know, I'm not trying to pick on the homeless. That's not my goal. It's just that's what it looked like. And then Jack Perry, he looks... The license he had on pants had been washed for the last 20 years, and then they were given to him. I was like, what? They don't dress like professional wrestlers at all. And they certainly didn't get in the ring and professional wrestle. Nope. So I guess it matched. Skip, Cedra skipped a lot. She was like, can I skip? I said, yeah, go ahead. So there was glass, there's tacks, and then the books. And they got Darby in the coffin. Then they plan to set the coffin on fire, and as commentary said, I think it was Sockface, like, they plan to finish him off. In other words, kill him. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. But then music hit, Sting comes out to an amazing ovation. Straight chilling. Yeah, it's so urgent. He's like, man, he was walking like he left the car. He's got to go to school and handle his kids. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't want to go in there, but I have to mess somebody up. You know, he was full, full, well, most up to date Sting regalia, just dress, but he was just chilling. I'm like, if they really gonna set him on fire, there's no urgency. Like, yeah, you know, I get there when on, I get there. They're gonna set my man on fire. I get there. I, yeah, I, I, I get. Yeah, all right, right now. You're all right, <laughs> you know, you know, I can see you. It's good. So Sting beats down everyone, DDT's Perry, gets Darby out of the coffin. So now, now I gotta I gotta let y'all know something. Alright, just just hear me out for those that might not like what I usually have to say. Um so Darby Allen's in the coffin. Mm -hmm. They put this, I don't know, uh, uh lighter fluid ish, and it won't lighter fluid, it was brown. It looked, it looked like pee. It was yellow. So that means it's going to burn off quick. Because lighter fluid looks like water. Mm -hmm. So that means they, they're going to they're gonna set it on fire. All right. Let's say they cover the whole thing. They're going to set it on fire. The whole top of the casket catches fire. And it's burning up with Darby inside of it. And that's going to hurt Darby. How? Just explain. I guess it's going to stand there and, and it burn through to it burn through to Darby. I don't know. It's going to, it'll be on fire for at best a minute. Darby in there just might get a little warmer and then he'll be like, I guess it's over. I, uh, I think that was just dumb. It's not well thought out. It isn't. What should have happened? This is how I would have done it. You want to tease something like that? He's in the coffin. You close it. You bring him out because you done won the match. You beat his ass a little bit. Then you dump that stuff all over him. And whoever got the lighter, Darby goes after and keeps knocking it from the hands. They got to keep getting it. Sting's music, Sting's music plays because this ain't right. He's on his way down. Darby is still fighting. He's kicking. He's low blowing. 
he's head button with the, the tax if he still had him on his forehead. He's fighting as best that he can and to keep this lighter from them. And then they finally, finally get that lighter. They open it, they click it, and right before they get to him, Sting pops him with the bat. Yeah. The lighter goes down. Darby's free. They beat up the heels and they leave. That's how you do it. That would have been good, but they, they don't do good well at all. So now we get to the main event title versus career AEW title match. Swerve Strickland, champion, versus Brian Danielson. And that's about the most you're going to get out of me because after that, Brian Danielson, he came out to the final countdown. I, I got a few goosebumps. Not like the first time he did it because I'm like, okay, let's just be logical about this, everybody. Okay, let's just be logical. Swerve is a champion. He's been champion for a while. What did I tell you a long time ago? Swerve is the champion. He needs to be champion and lose it in the summer, most likely at Wembley, to most likely Osprey. This is a, a switcheroo here, but they went this way. I knew Swerve was going to lose. Uh-huh. I didn't know who he was going to lose to. Uh-huh. So then they say it's Danielson. I was like, okay, he ain't had the belt yet. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. There's nothing wrong with that. That's still good. But then it's champion versus career. So Danielson already said, when my contract run out, I'm, I'm going to mainly be at home. Mm-hmm. I will do a few sparse things here and there, wherever I feel like it or whatever the hell. And it's like, all right, cool. But if I lose to Strickland, I'm done. My career is over. I can't wrestle anywhere, yada, yada, yada. And Brian Danielson, he's bit. He is bit. He can't not wrestle. Take some time off, heal, have a special match. He's a feature, put butts in seats. Everyone anticipates it. He might show up every three to six or nine months or something like that. He'll probably oh, rest until he's 80. He, I'm, sure he, he's, I'm sure he wants to. So this, this is my logic, y'all. Swerve loses. He gets another try over and over. If Brian loses, he don't get anything. So he has to win. So if Swerve wanted to, if Tony wanted, he could get it back. So Danielson got to win. Because you'll look at someone and say, guess what, man? It's over. It's done. Finito. Go home. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. So that was the logic. So I'm like, okay, Brian Danielson is going to win this. That, that's where I was from the get-go. All right? But that won't mean I won't go watch the match. And it was a good match, by and large. <laughs> I suppose mostly. I, 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 was, I was unimpressed by the match. It, it, I try, y'all. I do. I try to. I try to. I try to. I try to like things that I normally wouldn't like, and I try to. But then I see things, and I'm like, why, why? <sighs> so look, after stunning the ref, who takes forever to console himself, Swerve Death Valley drives or Spicoli drives Brian onto the apron-placed ring bell. The bell was set there by Nana. Okay, that's the side of, of, of Brian Danielson's head. It's the side and kind of the top. So, Brian is busted open, arguably from the front or the side of the head. It looked like it was on the side of the head and pulling down the back of the ear. But it also ran across the top of his head. It... Ah! Uh, so... Ah! Uh, I mean, like, if somebody hits you in the back of the head... And you start bleeding from the front. Something's wrong. Yeah. Someone punch you in the gut and your finger starts bleeding. Something's not right. There was no thought put into this. Just, hey, man, blood. Yay. They'll like it. And they did. Yeah. Yeah. And so Swerve does the double arm stomp in front of Brian's daughter, who doesn't look scared at all. Swerve just stomps Brian Danielson's head in. And he's looking at the dog. I'm doing this for you. I'm going to send your daddy home. You want him home? You want to go home? And he's, and he's talking to her. And I had to mock that she... I was like, he knows this little girl. You can see it on her face. Mm -hmm. 
she's looking at him almost like what's uncle strickland saying she like a, she was listening face had an awesome hat love that hat she i'm not a gentle. fan of pink but that hat was freaking awesome it was and it matched her outfit perfectly she's looking at swerve and swerve is trying to be all big and bad and she's looking at him like He's talking to me, so I'm listening. She had her listening eyes on, and then mom had to grab her and pull her like, she's scared. It's like, no, it's no. too late. It's, we've already seen through it. You know, they, they tried, and I hate, I'm sick of AEW always involving freaking family. I am too. It's, it's, oh, man, do something different. I mean, like, not do that. They're going to gonna give her a job too? <sighs> Swerve uses something to try to open Brian up even more in the, at the corner. But uh, it's on his forehead and not the side. So Brian's hit. He, he, and later, Brian hit an avalanche tossing Tiger suplex, which looked brutal, devastating, picture perfect for a two count. I looked at the time and realized it, it ain't over yet. <laughs> so <laughs> Swerve, Swerve uses the vertebraker or arguably called the Kodomi Valentine. And quickly, the staff checks on Danielson. And I had to know, Danielson landed flat. Perfect. And they didn't come out early when he got his bell rung. Hmm. He got dropped on the side of his head on the ring bell. And they're like, I don't care. Oh, he just landed flat on his back. We got to check on him. Y'all, this is painful. You know, these are the things that stuck. There's a lot of little tiny things I'm not putting in here. A lot of tiny things. I'm not. I'm just not doing it. These are the things that just sore thumbed. And I don't have a whole lot to offer for this one because at points I was dozing off. Yeah, she was bored. I was not entertained at all. After three house call kicks, which is the running, leaping side low thrust kick. Three of those, and Brian, bloody face, and blood's already drying up. Yeah. And he's all looking haggard and jacked up and whatnot, so he's a bloody clam digger. <laughs> he kicks out, and Swerve is like, how, how, how could he? I don't understand. It wasn't my finisher. It wasn't even thing. It was just kicks to the head. <laughs> okay. So Brian lands the flying knee bomb, and Swerve brushes off and hits him with a house call. I was like, oh, that's a first. I know it's the Busaiko knee, but I'm like, I don't care. Um, Swerve hits the JML driver, renamed Big Pressure, which is the name of his song, which mm. they sung him to the ring with. And I think it was lip singing because the dude's voice was already there before he put the mic to his mouth. But that, I'm just saying. There you go. Um, and that was for a two count. Swerve taunts, yes. But while he's taunting the yes, the fans are saying no. I thought that was cool. <laughs> oh, the fans were into this match. Don't even get it twisted. The fans were into this match way, way too much. Because it was just, they was participating where participation wasn't needed. But, hey, it's all good. So long as they was enjoying it, you know. Uh, Paige runs in and just, just Adam Page, he runs in. Dismantles Nana nah, nah, and security before being rushed and taken away by uh, a mob of security. So then, using that, Brian sneaks in a flying knee bomb for only a two count. Would have been better because the fans were up. Brian counters a front roll because uh, Swerve he comes out the corner with the front roll and he got caught with a flying knee bomb. It was beautiful. I thought that was just beautiful. And then. After that, Danielson hit one from behind, and he's like, "No, nah, it ain't over. I got to, I got to really beat this guy." So that's giving respect and credit to him as champion. Mm -hmm. So then he a lot he locks in the Omoplata cross face or and oh well face lock on this one, not a cross face, and you know as they call it, the label lock, which I think it might be the original actual name of it. Swerve fights out a bit. Brian breaks the fingers. Ah, and the crowd. Ah. And then he applies the rings of Saturn with a neck crank. Swerve ultimately taps out. And the place just, just the, the, the roof just got blown off the ceiling with that. And the pyro, the celebration, it was epic. Uh, Yuta helps 
he came in quick with his with his belt on and he holds Brian's kid over the barricade and you know just leave the wife to just fend for herself. Um, and he, and he pulled the wife from the, oh, he, the kid he, over the, he pulled the kid over the barricade, but he had to leave the wife to fend for herself because the kid was bolting for the ring. Yeah, she did. Yeah, <laughs> so I think it was the other kid too. The boy, the boy. Yeah, yeah. the boy. He was like, I'm getting in there, and you know, and so the family joins in the ring. And the boy was a star of the show to me because he was like, I want this confetti. Yeah. Was, I don't blame him. It's all shiny, sparkly, and it's falling. It's like, I got to get this. I know you, Dad. I've been around you my whole my whole life. I don't care about this you. This here is confetti. This is it. And the daughter was like, I'm in I'm in the ring and I'm in front of everybody. She was just jumping up and down joyful. Mm -hmm. You know, so it it was a great celebration. The pyro, the you know, the the confetti. It was it was great. And that confetti came down in this gold. That could have been for either one of them. True. If it came down red, that would have been like, dude, really? <laughs> you know, but that was that was a great ending. Celebration was top notch. Loved it. And I wrote massive celebration ensues and it's a heroic moment, not just for Brian, but the fans in attendance. <laughs> Cause I thought they won too. That was that was great. Suck ass match, but the ending was great. Yeah, great ending. Great ending. I'm gonna give the they, ending. They all seem the, happy. The ending alone was a five star ending. The match, three. I know Dave Meltzer is gonna give this six stars, but yeah. It, so that that's what we thought. Let us know what you think. Um. I'm feeling so much better, so now I can probably do, uh, you know, the answering viewers. So I'll have to look back, see how many there are, and go through one at a time, uh, probably in one one clip if I can, hopefully. But that's going to do it for us. This has been Cedric Cassidy for CR Wrestling Commentary, doing our review on All Elite Wrestling's All In, which took place in London, Wembley Stadium. And they will be back there for Forbidden Door, the thing that has lost ratings each year. So we're going to... We're going to laugh at that in a year if we care to remember. Wait, I'm forgetting already. So with that, we want uh, y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And like, share, and subscribe as you see on screen. So that we can see you, after clicking that bell, next time.